answer any additional questions you have um, at the end of the class. So we're gonna be doing this for about an hour um, for all everyone that's registered, which means if you're on it, you're registered. Um, there will be a recorded YouTube link that we'll send to you guys. Um, use the chat window to ask any questions. We're gonna try to get through as much info as possible and answer your questions. Um, oh, we have a five week old multi poo puppies. Oh, five multi poo puppies. So you must be a breeder. Welcome. Um, Zena, your four year old puppy. Yes, my three year old is also a puppy. I totally um, always will call them that. Taylor Phillips, nine week old golden doodle. I also have a five month old golden doodle. So welcome to our group. We love our doodles. Emmy, four month old Boston Terrier. Thank you so much for showing up. We love seeing you guys here. Um, we're going to have some really great information that is super important for your puppies at this age. Um, this part of the course is for the humans. So go ahead and set your puppies up, whether in an X pen or in their crate, give them something to chew on or something to do so that they can be busy while you guys learn. Um, we are going to demonstrate a couple of skills, but you won't have to do it right away. Um, very cool. Uh, you'll also, every registration person, oh, you do have a question or two about info from last week. Um, there was info about taking the puppy out to different surfaces, including the beach. Is that okay before they are vaccinated? We're actually going to talk, that is a really great question. Thank you so much, Taylor. We're gonna talk about safe socialization with your unvaccinated puppies today. Um, so we have a whole video about how we're gonna go through that and how we do it with our very young puppies in school here in um, Southern California. So hopefully we can give you some good ideas that you can get those puppies out um, even with appropriate social distancing. You guys will have an option to submit um, a maximum of two minutes. So if you want to cut some things together, we just ask that it remains under two minutes because we have a lot of submissions. Um, we want to see videos of your young puppies if for nothing else than to give us some cute, wonderful um, pictures at this time. We want to see your adventures with your puppy and how to um, help you guys in any way like asking questions. Thank you so much, Taylor. Um, and feel free to continue to ask us questions. We have a Facebook group. We have a company website. So um, send us as much or as little information as you want. We'll try to help you out through all of these crazy times. Um, just to note that we are, this class is 100% free. We want to make these resources available to our community and to everyone in America as far as possible. Um, breeders, especially parents of young puppies. So um, the class is free, but we do accept donations because we are a small business right now and we want to be able to keep ourselves um, up and running for the, the good of our puppies in our area, especially, and to keep you puppy parents sane during this time when we're all um, sort of trapped in our houses. Yo, do you want to say anything else? Yes, uh, I'm Yara Medeiros. I'm the owner and founder of Canine Learning Academy. If she hasn't introduced herself, she is our head and lead trainer, Julie Fryman, and we're both uh, KPA, so Karen Pry Academy certified dog trainers. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for signing in and um, sharing and posting and kind of um, interacting this way. Obviously, now that we've been completely cut off from humans and all we have is our dogs, it's kind of nice to have at least a once a week interaction with some humans. So really, really appreciate it. Um, I did hear Julie mention we are totally free. So the one thing you can do for us, because we are a small business, is just screenshot either a picture of your dog or the screenshot of some of the, the videos that we're in, in incorporating and sharing, and then just blast social media so that we can go as wide as possible, as fast as possible. So that's one thing you can do for us. And again, we are taking donations. If you'd like to, you don't, totally don't have to. We are just excited to bring you this content. In fact, we, had, um, we have five classes right now that we're hosting online, and this was by far our favorite to put together. Oh so we gosh, had yeah. so much content that I think it's gonna, we're gonna try to pack it in, <laughs> in one hour, yeah. but um, we are sharing a lot of information. If you have an older dog, you can always um, 
check out our manners class. That's a little more into the training side where this is the, before you get into training, these are the things that we'd like to in, um, implement and share with you. And then we have a Rowdy Rover class, a Canine Good Citizen, and really excited, we have a tricks class coming up on Saturday. And the difference between a webinar and the other form of class, the interactive, is that class is for you and your dog. So you'll be, I'll be able to see you, where today we can't see you, we can't really hear you unless we turn your audio on, but you can chat. In the other format of class, it is actually you and your dog that will be participating in class. So that should be pretty fun. I can't wait for that class to start as well. So um, I think we are We're right on time. Right on time. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's see. So this is a class um, of four. If you didn't get a chance to check in last week, it is a series of four. So we'll be going through um, all four over and over and over again, because obviously the youngest of puppies are going to grow out of this, but pup new puppies are being born every day. So um, the class, you don't have to watch in order of one through four. There's no. just a series of four. So if you missed last week, just tune in at the end. Yeah, we are going to repeat those four classes each time. So you are on class two of four. Um, again, a little bit about us. We are both KPA uh, certified trainers. We've also taken this um, certified behavior adjustment training instructor program, which is for uh, we do use in our Rowdy Rover. Um, I'm Fear Free certified, so I do work with veterinarians and trying to get their whole practice to become fear free, you know, instructing where and how to bring in puppies that are coming through the front and back door. So, um, going to there. So during today's class, we're going to talk about Taylor. This one is for you. Um, socialize your pup safely when they're unvaccinated. So we have a lot of really great tips. We travel with young puppies a lot. So we're going to kind of go into how you do that safely um, in public. We're going to go over sounds and environments to expose your young puppies to um, starting out with the leash and the harness. We want to make sure that our puppies are comfortable. Um, if you throw that on all together, you may see some pulling away or biting at the leash. Yeah. We wanna to talk to you guys about how to make that um, a little bit easier of a transition. We're talking about puppy empowerment training, which is trademark uh, Canine Learning Academy. And we talk about puppy exploration. We'll go into that further. Tethering as a management tool, um, introduction to play, plus a little stealth training. We're gonna teach you how to play and train with your dog at mm -hmm. the same time. Using play. Yep interactive feeders, how and why we use them. Um, we wanna talk about jumping, probably the number one thing we get with older dogs, we get, my dog is jumping on everyone, so let's start when they're puppy. Which is really cute when they're a puppy right. and they're like 10 to 12 pounds, right. but then when you've got an 80 pound Rottweiler jumping on you, it's not so cute anymore. So cute. we'll help you prevent those upcoming problems. Um, we're gonna go into the methods that we use, capture, luring, and shaping, what it looks like, and then your homework is going to be assigned to do a capture behavior, a mark behavior, and a luring behavior. So we're gonna dive deep into clicker training, one of my favorites, and um, we're gonna show you what to capture, what, tr treat, uh, what training uh, behaviors you're gonna do today, and then we're gonna assign you some upcoming homework, and we'll show you how to um, turn in that homework. All right, socialization. So we take puppies as young as eight weeks in our program and we do have a breeder on here and i've worked with a lot of breeders that are exposing them to the different sounds and using youtube and um, different surfaces by having these little crazy obstacles that we demonstrated last year last but, week or last yeah I guess it feels like week. last year yeah. <laughs> But little things like this, this is our little carrier that we take our puppies in when they're eight weeks. And we do make sure that they're exposed to this safely and they enjoy it, but it's a little chest harness. And I'm gonna show you a video of our little Labradoodle. Just like a baby Bjorn, yeah. um, your baby or your puppy can see out into the world, but you still have a good hold and they're secure, um, holding them under their butt so their weight isn't too far down. But our puppies love this going to the Pier safely yeah. going to we took a puppy to vegas and did a big trick show so um it's a, it's a great way to expose them without having to force them towards these sometimes unknown situations and positive exposure just means getting out there at a distance that your dog stays under threshold does not mean they have to touch but they can hear even if you pull up in your car to a dog park which i know not going to happen anytime soon <laughs> right. but 
pull up to a potential dog park or park and the sound of dogs playing and the little collars that make all those noises are is a great way to expose your dog at a distance without actually having them to go in having them just stop so them. one of the reasons that yo is so passionate about this topic is because we're told over and over again, don't take your puppies out, be so, so careful until they're fully vaccinated, they shouldn't be on the ground. And that is true, we wanna keep our young puppies safe, especially to exposure of the unknown, but there are a lot of easy ways that we can do that with um, taking crates, wagons. we've taken wagons, putting strollers. Them um, my puppy was carried around in a tote bag, but they also have fancy dog carriers yeah. that you can do with it. So just getting them out and not necessarily overwhelming them, but exposing a little bit at a time makes each trip a little bit easier because the first time is always the hardest, no matter what you're doing. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas. We do have on our YouTube channel, a video that's got like 10 different ways that we, um, expose the dogs out to the environment safely. Um, so this next category, we're going to show you how to socialize your dog in the environment. I think we're doing a, and, and sounds. Sounds. Yeah. And we live in Long Beach. If you live in Huntington, Long Beach, uh, anywhere near Disneyland, you've got <laughs> fireworks. You've got the Grand, uh, what's the Grand Prix? Yep. You've got so many loud sounds that you need to expose your dog to safely. Otherwise, it becomes something that they're always afraid of. And then you're having to, you know, backtrack there. So if you don't live in California, then that also includes storms tractors. and tractors. <laughs> and, you know, we live in the city, so we're used to talking about city examples. But think about where you are and what you hear and see most. We don't have thunder here, but maybe once or twice a year. But if you live on the East Coast, that's a that's something your dog is going to be yeah. hearing a lot. So we want to make sure that you're doing your specific region or area um, and that we do live in a beach community. So our side of socialization is going to be mostly for city and beaches. But we're going to show you the how and you can implement it in any way that works for, your, for your environment. So exposure to environments like the beach, the vet office, outdoor market, um, holiday celebrations, if your kids play soccer, those are all things that you're gonna need to go off and check off. To safely do that, you can carry, use the wagon, the stroller, and again, be at a distance where your dog is under threshold. You, I would recommend using some kind of food um, that, that when you're exposing them to, let's say you're at a soccer game and you're constantly doing feeding maybe every 10 to 20 seconds while they're in a carrier, they're gonna really enjoy watching a soccer game next time. So when you turn around and you're no longer exposing them to the, that environment or wherever you're at, um, the food kind of stops. So it's pay, 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 pay while they're watching and food stops um, while that site, the thing that they're looking at is disappears. And I really racked my brain for this particular slide. I wanted to make sure that we had relevant examples for right now because we are That's under true. another month of social distancing. So I took out things like public events um, and big concerts, but those are really great environments. But for right now, these are the ones that we can, um, in orange, you'll see the ones that we can appropriately do with social distancing. And right now is actually kind of great yeah, because I there's like not yeah. the big amount of crowds. There's not a lot of things that are going to surprise or scare your puppy. So, you know, it seems a little odd, but go and take your puppy to a cemetery, go um, to a marina or a pier right now, as long as you're safely away from other people. Um, I think that your puppies will really enjoy the trip and have a lot less stimulation um, so that they can really enjoy the exposure. Good point. All right, next is exposure to sound. Um, we do this, we'll, we post a lot of videos around, probably around June because we're getting everybody ready for 4th of July, but I really highly recommend this be a daily part of your dog and your interaction together is exposing them to a new sound pretty much daily. How it works is you're going to take um, the volume of the sound that you're going to use. Let me grab my phone. So YouTube is our number yeah, one go-to. You can say. find every sound that's ever been created on YouTube, your phone, your computer, your smart TV, um, from construction noises to gunshots to fireworks and cow sounds and all of these yep. um, things that you're having hard time to find face-to-face. -face. Use, use your sound therapy or your sound um, on your YouTube. You can also use the things that are in your kitchen, like the blender, the vacuum. 
but instead of lowering the volume because we can't, you are going to just create more distance so it's a little bit more, a little farther away so that your dog stays under threshold. And how it works is the sound ghost starts at a very, very low volume and then you begin feeding. Sometimes it's pretty, I mean, be pretty generous. And while the sound is playing, they're getting fed or they're being reinforced, whether it's petting or playtime. And as soon as the sound turns off, the play, the food, the petting all stops. So it's sound on, low volume, feed, 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 or play, 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 or pet, 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 sound off, everything stops. And then if your dogs are not in, you know, they don't hear it at all. You can about every two minutes, you can raise the volume small increments at a time. So here we have um, our new felicious yeah. family. This is they um, have five dogs right now. Yes, I think this is a video. Is this three? This, this is three out yeah. of the five, but um, working in June right before the, the fireworks, like we said, they go big here at the beach. So we want to make sure that our big dogs, especially, um, don't crash through the wall or jump yeah. through a window when they're scared by these sudden noises. So they had actually had a lot of fun doing this together. And, and yeah, this was shot in June and these puppies, this is their first time. They're both only six months. The ones on the outside, yes. uh, let me play that again. So you want to make sure that they're still comfortable enough eating food. So if your dog is not taking food or they're snatching food, you're going to take the volume down, take it down or get a little farther away. Yeah. So these puppies actually did make it through 2019 4th of yes. July very well. The owner said that they didn't even care whatsoever about fireworks. Yeah. Um, let me, let me go through. We do have a few questions out there. Um, Alex says, yes, I take them on a drive. Um, Joanna, what does a puppy over threshold look like? Are there are they barking, squirming, scratching to get out of their enclosure? So depending on the age of the puppy is going to be especially um, important for young puppies. They're probably going to shy away more. Um, but as you get into the four or five month mark, we might notice jumping or barking or um, maybe increased biting um, to try and remove themselves from the situation. So if it's not your normal, lovable, sweet baby, they're probably getting a little stressed and, and beginning to hit that threshold mark. So uh, stress signals will look like the no, they're not eating at all, they're not taking any treats. They're also like panting. You do see these three dogs panting, but they're not stressed because of the sound, they're stressed because He's holding, He's holding off food. Of food. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a particular YouTube channel? I believe finish. there was a one from last week. Yeah. Um, our YouTube channel is Canine Learning Academy, and um, it's just YouTube slash Canine Learning Academy, and that's where we post all of our videos. Um, we also have a private page where we, a private Facebook group page where we post a lot of the webinars and videos that we're using on this um, particular slide or this particular webinar. But to go back to Joanna, some other comments, um, very low end of, of, of stress signals would be the lip licking. You could see um, just kind of avoiding. So if they're avoiding or if they're frantically moving left and right, those are, could be little signs of stress. And it means that we need to lower the volume or increase the distance from where the sound is coming from. We don't, doesn't mean we want to stop completely. We might need to stop for a while and take a break, but start over with a much lower volume. In fact, when you first start this, the volume should not even be heard by you. Right. Very, very low. And please don't hook this up to your surround sound and like <laughs> blast it, but that could be the goal. But start off very, very low volume where you barely hear it, wait about two minutes, and then you can increase the volume. I think you meant, um, is there a particular YouTube channel for sounds? No, we typically oh, just yeah. uh, search the sound. If you search construction noises, I'm there'll sure. be an hour long of construction noises. So um, Yo's gonna do a little quick demo on her phone. So like on YouTube, well, I guess you guys can't really see that. I don't know if you can. All right, so I'm just gonna search, uh, let's do fireworks. Yeah. And there's so many different choices, but fireworks show. And there is an app for, for dog people that has a bunch of different sounds like the lawnmower, dark, barking dogs. There's an app that has everything. And we'll go ahead and put it into your feedback. If I can find it in a second, I will post it. So three, two, one, skip this ad. 
And then here you've got, here, I'm gonna turn it up, but, is that music? Oh. <laughs> You can hear that, but here's fireworks. So not just the one pop, but the yeah. 10 pops, yeah. All right, all right, we'll go. So positive exposure to harness and collar. Some dogs are still hesitant about having a harness and collar on, and we highly recommend as puppy specialists that you put your dog on a harness versus just using the collar, especially when you're trying to expose them to something, because they might be a little afraid and they might want to back up. Having something connected to their, to their neck could really do some damage on the trachea, so having a body harness um, ones that I recommend for puppies are just a little Velcro one, and we've got some on our, our website under favorites that have like the little Velcro nice and squishy harnesses as well as other harnesses for our older dogs. So, And for puppies that are going out um, a, a lot of times during the day, they even have yeah. soft breathable ones that you can just keep, keep on. on so that way when you need to leash them or tether them, you're just like, you're out the door, you're ready to go. Yeah. So that's always a, a good option. So here we have a how to expose your dog to a harness. Um, same with the leash, very, very thin leash at first, just attaching the leash and letting them kind of be around the house. Um, like right. they play with it, no big deal. Don't expect to clip the leash on and they're gonna <laughs> into a heel position and go. That's not the most important part of your puppy's age right now. Exposure and socialization. We have another 10, 12, 15 years yeah. to get into formal training and perfect heel and walking loose leash. Let's let our puppies take a second and process these new rules and boundaries in a positive way. And then we can always get more and more formal and introduce more yes. rules, but have fun right yeah, now. Your puppies are so young that you really want to enjoy this time. It, it goes by so quickly. First goal is to get your dog interested and bond with them. So you want to have fun. So here we have exposure to harness. The first thing you want to do is just present the harness casually, very casually while your dog is looking at you and then pull it away and offer a treat instead. So it's here, are you interested? If they have show any, any engagement at all, even looking at it, you can then take it away and give a treat instead. After you've exposed the harness and say, hey, look, it's really not scary, see? Um, then you're gonna want to bring them towards the harness and you're gonna wanna put it on, right? So really important here, do you see that the hand that's holding the harness stays still? The food, if you're having a harness where it's going over the head, that's really scary. I would even be scary if you're trying to put something over my head. I just kind a of be like, uh, yeah, if someone's yeah. forcing you into a t-shirt, that's going to be it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so left hand who has the harness is totally still, and it's the hand with food that's going to move. So don't do this. <laughs> bad, bad move. See how he backs, See, he backs up. up. Yeah. yeah. Instead, you want to be very patient and just hold the food there. And your goal is to get them to take food with the presence of the harness still there. So I'm then, moving, yeah. yeah, moving a little tiny bit at a time. So just bottom line, be patient. It's not going to happen all at once. Sometimes it only takes 10 or 20 seconds or two minutes, but definitely for this uh, exposure to something like a harness, which they're gonna have to wear for the rest of your life, you're gonna wanna take your time. You wanna go over puppy empowerment training? Puppy That's one of my favorites. Empowerment training. So talking about your, your dog on the leash, this is um, it's gonna be really important and I wanna just highlight the, the very last line of this. Exploration when your puppy is young produces a lot more focus when your dog is older. So we think that the second we get our puppy, we should start training so it's going to last their lifetime. But really, so much time. The more, much, the more they feel comfortable exploring, the more confident they are. They're like, I've seen that. I right. can focus on my mom on this walk. Or, you know, I've smelled that tree a hundred times. I think, you know, maybe we'll pay attention right now or go on a run or something like that. So giving them the opportunity to explore and then make the choice to come back is so much more powerful than just forcing them into um, a heel or, or a long distance loose leash walking. So um, this is. 
Miss JD. She's our little um, mini Aussie doodle pup. Notice how long and loose this leash is. I'm doing this with a, you could do 10 or 15 feet, just depending on the size of your dog, picking a thin or a larger one. Um, you can see we're at the dock. We're around lots of smelly things. And I'm not walking her, I'm following her. I'm keeping it super loose and casual. I'm letting her nose lead the way. And when she stops, I'm gonna stop so that I don't have to tug her along with me. Um, you can see she's actually really excited to do this. Her tail is wagging, her body language is really loose, um, and she's not pulling at all. There's no rush to get through this. She's really having a fun time. It's important for their healthy brain development because dogs uh, sniff 40 times as good as humans. But to be able to do that, they have to practice. Just like any, any skill that we have, um, we excel at it because we practice. So allowing them to do that as puppies is, is gonna be important. So you're gonna have time to teach your dog how to walk formally on a loose leash. But at the very beginning, when we first get our, a puppy client, we ask that they do this type of walk a longer leash walk, letting them explore each of the houses in the neighborhood. You know, if you're walking three houses down, let them go out, let bring them back in or let them come back in versus going into that formal loose leash walking. So highly recommend doing this first and then you can get into more loose leash walking. And this is also mental enrichment. So you're not just out there exercising their body. We don't want to just make Athletes, Total athletes dumb, yeah. dumb jocks. The more you walk, the more you're going to need to walk. But this kind of walk, you really don't have to go very far. It's very low human energy. And it yeah. wears them out just as much to go out for 10 minutes of sniffy walk as it does for a 20 minute walk or in a circle with nothing to do. Yeah. So if, our clients really like this when we say, go just take them on a pet walk. And they're like, oh God, it's so much easier so than trying relaxing. to figure out where the leash goes and all yeah. of that. So a couple rules, two hands on the leash is recommended so that the dog feels like they're completely off leash. Number two, when your dog stops, you stop. And number three, they lead the way. Right. That's it. Very simple, right? All right. Uh, management with tethering. So a lot of people don't do, a lot of trainers don't actually recommend tethering. That's just like not part of something that they, that they incorporate. But I love to have my dog tethered to me. So the puppies that I work with, I usually work in this one floor that's got a living room, a dining room and a kitchen. And so I have the dog often tethered to me. Um, and, and when I'm doing the dishes or if I go in the refrigerator, the dog is tethered to me. So it learned, they learn how to stay with you and follow you. And it gives me an opportunity to reinforce the behavior that I'm really looking for, which is calm, sit, a down. Now I'm not having to cue anything. It's just that the dog gets bored of standing, they sit and I will try to reinforce this. So in this video, Julie's doing dishes. The dog goes into a sit. She's saying something like good puppy and she's rewarding with a treat saying, hey, I really like this position. I like what you're doing. It's not easy for a dog to sit calmly while you do the dishes. But by incorporating this in the afternoon between like four and seven o'clock, doing this for about 20 minutes, your dog will learn to be calm while they're with you. They'll learn to follow you. And if you're still in the potty training and house training, now you have full access to your dog. So if they do get into something that they're not supposed to, you're right then and there. If you see the dog spinning around and start sniffing, you know, oh, they probably need to go potty. So instead of thinking, oh my God, I, I need to punish them. Instead, you're going to have the opportunity to be there and bring them where they need to be so that you can reinforce that behavior that you're looking for. So tethering. Guaranteed no more accidents, yeah. right? If your dog is right under your nose, they're not sneaking away around the corner and having their own potty time or finding something to get you to chase them while you're doing household chores. Um, my pup here, he likes to steal a sock to get my attention, but if he's tethered to me, there's no, you know, way. no yeah. way he's getting into my laundry bag just to go and get that. So um, yeah. this is my sweet boy, Cooper, and he really likes watching me do household chores and this is his, his routine. Introduction to play. Um, last week, um, and if you missed last week's uh, lesson, we talked about 
um, human play, how important it is to bond. And this week, we're going to up the ante by introducing a toy. And we're going to talk about tug. Um, I just want to say one thing. Um, we got some really cute pictures oh, and some, some social media of people getting down on the floor and getting excited. Um, mm -hmm. So that's what we love to see. If you want to go back and, and watch that or if you want to um, send us some video of you guys playing tug, it was so exciting to yeah. see people learning how to act like a dog and get down on their level. So um, we enjoyed that throughout the week, getting that. And there was a couple uh, a couple comments on there and they said, what do you do when your the dog, you know, grabs onto your long sleeve shirt? So um, teaching a tug is going to help with the, the obsessive biting or chewing that you get from play. It is an arousal, right? The dogs get super excited. It's playtime, just like they would with their playmates, they're going to use their mouth. And so they're going to use their mouth on us when we're doing human play because that's all that they know. So now with incorporating a toy of some kind, we um, can steer them away from biting on us. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I do human play for a long time, as long as I can handle it. So my dog will do human play with me. Although he looks like he's going to like totally prance on me. I still do human play for older clients that don't want, you know, the the potential to rip skin, then you're going to go right into play with a toy pretty quickly. So that's the difference. Um, through toy play, we can teach the take, the hold, the drop, the get, and fetch. We can also use a tug toy or play to reward the dog. So instead of having to always use a treat, you can totally just use a toy and uh, you know ask for something really simple and reward with the toy instead it's actually my dog's preferred yeah uh, reinforcement it, yeah. yeah so and jd she doesn't always take food but if you bring out a good toy she's willing to, goes crazy. to <laughs> jump into work mode so so a couple rules with tug you do you want to say something you want to invite the dog you don't want them to start just grabbing anything out of your hand it needs to be an introduction to do you want to play tug? So our cue that we use here at Canine Learning Academy is take. Uh, we also use that for service animal dogs. We like to use take so that we can teach them how to hold and, and it all turns into fetch later on if you'd like. When the dog, when we're done playing or we want to take a quick break, there also needs to be a drop. So in this video, I'm going to show you um, how to get your dog to want to play. So it looks like human play making it exciting. She is part Aussie, so we want to add some movement so that she gets in there and chases. She's even squeaking it in the real, in the audio version. Oops. Spoiler alert. Yeah. So to begin, you want to bring the toy down low, hold it still about six inches away from their mouth, and then you want to do a little shake. So I just do a little wrist shake, one, two, three, four. When the dog kind of starts to be interested, then I'll pull away slow. Now don't pull away quickly, you've lost it. Like they're gonna be like, oh, that was too hard. That so you, or they're gonna chomp on you to try yeah. and catch it, so. So it's, I'll just pretend like this is it. So it's about six inches away from the nose, shake it, and as soon as they start to move, you're gonna pull just a tad bit, and then stop and let them come to it. And as they come to it, you're gonna say, take and their mouth opens and they grab onto it, you're gonna hold on to the toy, do not let go, and get a little bit more of a harder bite for the dog. So, here, I mean, she's been playing for a long time, but mm -hmm. I, would, I would have definitely let her have it a long time ago. So one of the other things that she's doing is she's getting her excited by doing little taps and pushes, not shoving her, but doing little taps on the side and getting her excited about being a little rough, but doing it with something in her mouth um, also helps automatically redirect her where you want her. Yeah. So once it's in the mouth, you're gonna shake like it's alive, and then you're gonna push in about two inches and pull. And what happens is automatically, if I push someone, they normally will retract and push back. So it's just a two inch pull, and then when they go to actually pull away, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for them to bite a little bit harder and pull away. And now we've got a full take, right? So here we are here. She's pulling. She was exhausted, by the way. We had her <laughs> doing like a Stairmaster thing before this. But she's grabbing, she's grabbing. And then here, she's starting to pull. And what I do is I let go and let her win. And I make a big deal out of it. Like, oh, you got it! 
it. And then I cued a drop for her to drop it. She let go of it. She got back into her sit and we can play again. So it's take, drop. The moment their mouth opens and they drop the toy, that's their drop. The moment their mouth opens when they receive, they're trying to go after it, that's your take. And you want to go back and forth and get them, um, get them going. So you don't want to toss it yet. This is the very beginning stage of tug. Um, and they're, as their teeth get stronger and they enjoy this, what you'll notice is that when they actually do take it, because they love the game, bring it back. they come back to you. And now if you go into recalls later, or not recalls, if you go into fetch later, you're going to get the dog to bring that all the way back to you. So start with introducing tug of war only. If you're doing fetch already, I want you to go back and get a really strong tug. Enrichment feeders. So that's, our favorite. Um, that's, that's our favorite. this is my absolute favorite because I have a smart, active dog. I have a sheep dog mix. Um, so it's not only important for me to physically stimulate her, her brain is so smart. She'll figure out how to get into anything, including my cabinets um, and her treat drawer. Um, so indoor brain exercise, the point of the exercise is the brain is a muscle and it only improves as you are exercising it. So um, right now you guys are all stuck inside, you're doing work, you've got, you know, the kids are in homeschool right now. This gives your dog a puzzle or a brain game to work on while you guys are learning or working. Um, it helps to tire your dog out. There's less destructive and attention seeking behaviors. There's not, mom, tell me what to do all the time. They actually have, it encourages independence and self-reliance and occupying themselves. Um, just like you would for a kid, you want to teach them small activities like Lincoln logs or Lego so that when you're not around or you're busy, yeah, they automatically know where they should be and what are other ideas that they could be doing. Also for increasing duration in a crate um, or alone time, giving them something to do like this is awesome. Absolutely. And imagine if you, every time you leave the house for separation anxiety prevention, if you left the house and you always gave them a puzzle, um, they would be like, oh my God, please get out of here so I can have my pup, my pop, my popsicle, my puzzle. So and it also extends mealtimes. So for you yeah. chow hounds out there, if you have a lab or uh, a golden, I mean just one bite is usually gone. Um, so instead of just doing the the plain puzzle bowls, which are nice, but if you're doing it every day, it's not really a puzzle. It's pretty easy. So we wanna encourage things that knock over, things that they have to roll with their face, getting creative and doing, yeah, um, it does, it teaches confidence and they're more likely to try new things when they succeed and get, oh my gosh, if I paid you a dollar for every new experience, you'd, you'd be probably rich. be more <laughs> adventurous, yeah. right? Um, and so the, we have do-it-yourself videos on our website, on our um, Instagram, on our Facebook, so you don't have to spend a thousand dollars at the pet store or on Amazon. There are oh, really simple things. Some in are your really house. cheap though. Like this yeah. ball here, I think was only four or five dollars. Yeah. yeah. So some are really cheap if you don't feel like making things from home. I actually, after Julie left yesterday, I did a water bottle because uh, she she had done one for her dog, and I was like, took the water bottle, emptied it out, put Bentley's uh, treats in there or food. Put it on the ground and he literally picked it up and you know tried to <laughs> he's empty pretty smart yeah. yeah um so balls if your dog likes fetch this is another way to incorporate balls into their life they get to roll it around and things dump out um and it's using so enrichment is defined as using the mind or body to stay active exercised and engaged now that we're all home all the time i think we start to realize <laughs> the value of enrichment yeah. and connection thinking about what your dogs are doing all day, if they're stuck in the house, like you're stuck in the house, yeah. you need adventures or something to keep their mind busy so they don't go stir crazy like a lot of people are right now. If you have multiple dogs in the household, if you can keep them separated at first and you give um, a, a puzzle like this, they're more likely to like who you've brought home. So <laughs> if you just brought home a rescue or you've got a new puppy and an older dog, use a X pen to separate them and give them their puzzles. Um, this is also great for when you're putting them on a spot or a bed, if you don't have any bully sticks or chews, um, or if they're, it's really messy, like peanut butter or wet food, you can put down a blanket or put them on the yeah. bed. 
um, and put that there so they're not getting it everywhere in your right. house. Some of the interactive feeders are, they don't move as much. So they're great for crates. And then we've got some where you can just let them go all over the house. So if you're working from home and you need them to kind of sit still, there's, um, there's ones that we recommend. I actually like this one. It, who's the this name? is West, West Paw. Paw. Yeah, yeah, I West love Paw it because it's good. open and I have about 10 of those and I actually stuff them and put them in the freezer so I can just pop them out when I'm ready. Freezing extends playtime, extends yep. mealtime, and it also feels good on all your puppies that are teething. Um, where can I order one? Great question. Online, any pet shop, Amazon, a, Amazon Chewy, um, or even, you know, local small I think we pet have that stores one that on our whole aisles. Yeah. And we also have it on our Facebook page. So caninelearningacademy.com slash favorites. So go to Canine Learning Academy. And if you look under there, there's this favorite tab. And then that has a list of our, some, a lot of these that are featured on there. And then there's a couple that we haven't used. All right. Yeah. Ooh, prevention topics. So last week we talked about potty accidents and we showed a, a really, we have a really extensive video on potty training. Um, I don't think I put the bell one on here yet, but I'll do that next time. We'll get there. Okay. So for today's topic, we're going to talk about jumping and jump prevention. That means before your dog learns to jump, what do you do? And because they're at a really influential age, we can knock this out right now. Yeah. If your dog is still young and super impressionable, you can knock out the jumping for the rest of their life if you're being consistent yep. and if you're rewarding the desired behavior, meaning instead of focusing on them when they're pushing against you and you're pushing back, waiting and managing that unwanted behavior and then reinforcing the sit, the down, the showing their belly. A lot of dogs will just automatically lay down. That, and yeah. that's, that's definitely preferred to being jumped on by an 80 or a hundred pound dog. So what we'll talk about is also, if your dog is already jumping, is what to do now to change the jumping to four paws on the ground. So here's Mr. Cooper again. He sits to say, please, hi, stranger, can I get some pets? He sits, then he gets some good loving. So what, uh, <laughs> what Julie has asked uh, Curtis, who's doing the greeting here to do, is to say sit when Cooper gets about a foot away. So instead of coming up and running and jumping, which is what most puppies will do, instead he's, she's asking him, say sit before he gets too close. The moment that the butt touches the ground, Curtis is coming in and reinforcing. Now this is a puppy that wants to be pet. So if your dog doesn't want to be pet, then it's going to look a little different. Yeah. But he's very people motivated. And so especially if you're in your house and there are other people around, instead of just going straight for the pet, use that petting as a reinforcement for saying please or sitting nicely. Um, and, and you can even add in some food or some treats if it's a really exciting guest, like, yo, is my dog's favorite person. So obviously she's going to get really excited when she sees her. She has some food there automatically to help her concentrate for a second before she then gets some The loving. second video is like if you were coming home and your dog's not crated, let's say that your husband or your wife is already home and the dog is out and now you're coming through the door that's closed. Alex, this one's probably for you. <laughs> she comes in and all three of her dogs are like, mom. So instead of coming home and going, oh my God, my puppies, which causes excitement, Come in down low. So one way to do it, if your dogs don't have the ability um, to, to, to go into a sit because they're so excited, have that food ready and just show up down low where their nose is and keep their paws down by letting them nibble on the food. So here we have Julie hiding in the pantry because we're trying to record this. You didn't have to tell them that. <laughs> um, being, this is a perfect example of being proactive and not reactive. I'm not waiting for him to jump and then asking him. I'm coming in the door and I'm already prepared that he's excited to see me. So I'm going to prep and have that treat ready so he keeps his four paws on the floor. So if your dog has already learned to jump on you when you walk through the door, this is what you're going to do instead. Now you have two options. One, you can ignore it and then wait for them to go into sit and then reinforce that. That's option number one. But if your dog's really doing it and deliberately and it's something that they're really good at, you might want to just go ahead and cue something 
more something better like keep your paws down so here we have her coming through the door with the food ready and it's food to the mouth and she's holding the food and then he goes into a sit now he gets his pet and his love yeah so q <laughs> what did she say Our her dog is a leaping machine. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's totally understandable. Of course, if you've been gone for eight hours a day. Or, I would, or 30 minutes. Or like. 30 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Your dog, you go to the bathroom and back and your dog thinks that you've disappeared for a lifetime. So it's natural that they're excited to see you, but we want to help capture that awesome behavior of their four paws on if the If you have two or three dogs when you're doing this and you, you don't want to train them separately, just come in and, and use two hands. Okay. You could or just come into the dog that's, that just always jumps. So in your case, Alex, I would come in with Sebastian first and the other two will be like, wait, what? Why didn't I get food? And then they'll look at Sebastian, they'll go, oh, okay, yeah, sit. So, so that's kind of what would happen. And for you puppy parents that have older dogs in the house, your puppy copies everything your older dog does, right? Mm -hmm. Monkey see, monkey do. So for the good and the bad, <laughs> so if there are heavy jumpers, we want to help your older dog be a good example for your younger dog. And for puppies, we want to go ahead and reward that behavior right at the beginning. So capturing, these are the three methods that we use in our company for training um, any and every dog. Capturing is marking and reinforcing a behavior when it happens. And we're going to have a little demonstration of that in a little bit. Um, but capturing is just like a camera. You are something happens, you mark it like my dog learned um, a head tilt. So when she tilted her head, I said, yes. And then I paid her. And we're going to talk a little bit about the mark in a minute, but I love my clicker and so does my dog. Um, luring, you're going to notice a lot of, um, especially in videos of trick dogs, um, changing the position of your dog. If you have um, taking a lot of pictures or something like that, it helps to move your dog's uh, face around and their body where you need it. So luring is treat to the nose and you're going to slowly guide them. It's almost like putting a string, string. at the end of a, of a food source and they literally just kind of follow it. Now, the problem with luring is that dogs that have been taught using luring, they're always looking for that food source. So, so we, when don't, you're wondering, we don't recommend it a lot. <laughs> when you're wondering, my, I hear this a lot, my dog only does it if I have a treat in my hand. Well, if you've trained your dog with a treat in your hand, practice how you play right? So it's okay to use for a little while and for a couple of things, but, but you want to get rid of the food long right away. term. Yeah. yeah. It's more of a GPS than an actual direction. Um, they're not, that's a good analogy. Cause if I use GPS, I, I still don't know how to get there. I've been I, to some of my clients house. I turn times. off the GPS yeah. and like go there myself. I'm like, okay, now I know the route. They don't know the directions. They're yeah. following that little arrow. So, um, capturing is what we really love to do, especially for foundation behaviors, things that your dog already knows and Party. naturally does going potty, uh, sit or down, the head tilts, the body stretches. We can get some cute behaviors. Um, we have a trainer that even did sneezes. Oh, that's right. Something that your dog does on a pretty regular basis, you're gonna be able to capture it like a camera and then reinforce it. So for example, uh, last week we talked about potty training and we said that the moment that they're going potty, you're gonna capture that behavior by putting a word with the action. So if they're going potty, that's the behavior that we're looking for. And then the word we're going to say is something like go potty, right? While they're doing it, not to scare them and stop them from doing it. After they are done, you're going to reward that. And then they're going to start to put that word go potty with the action because you're reinforcing it. Yep. You're naming what their body is naturally doing. So you're teaching them English. Yeah. Um, shaping is the, the last method that we're going to go into. And shaping is starting out like you're a sculptor. You have a big block of clay and you're going from an overall general view and you're getting tighter and you're curving off those edges and you're shaping into a really precise, beautiful picture, um, depending on whether it's a really big, beautiful behavior chain, like going to the refrigerator, pulling it open, grabbing a beer and bringing it back to you. Or if you're just doing it down and your dog is not really comfortable putting their belly on the floor or they don't understand what you're asking for, um, we can shape that with a general head dip and then shoulders and then arms and then belly on the ground. 
Um, so taking an overall goal for success, especially if your dog is confused about what they're being asked to do, um, and then simplifying it each step. Just like you're walking up a staircase, you're getting closer to a goal, but don't expect a perfect behavior the first few times you do it. That's not right. really fair for a young person. So we're going to have an example of all three of those. Mm -hmm. So marker training, a marker is basically a word marker or a clicker that basically tells the dog you did it. But in order for it to actually work, we have to load a clicker or load the marker so that they understand that the reinforcement or the food is coming later. So we use a clicker because it's super clear, there's no confusion, but you can also use a verbal marker. A verbal marker would be a word, a one syllable word that's precise that tells your dog, you did it, hold on, let me go get something for you. Um, the problem with the verbal marker is that if there's multiple people in the house, like the very common verbal marker that we use now with some of our clients is yes. And we'll hear yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yippee. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's so many different right. versions. The dog's like, well, did I, did I, I was that it? You know, I don't know. Where the clicker is so precise. Um, we only use it for training a new behavior. So when our clicker trained dogs know it's their turn and they see, oh, we're loading up. Here's our treat bag and our clicker. They go into like work mode. They put on their tie and their suit. And they're like, <laughs> okay, well, let's go. So I like um, using a clicker. Um, I know all of us that do use clicker train clickers love it. Oh, <laughs> Alex is like, um, we like it because it's very precise and the dogs that use clicker training, they seem to give us a bunch of different scenarios. Um, like I can present a water bottle to my dog and he'll be like, do you want me to pot? Do you want me to use my teeth? Do you want me to use my nose? They How about my body? How about my butt? My chin? Yeah. So. It's problems. They try things. And I think that's what's so awesome about watching it is your dog really does have a say in their training and how and when they're doing things by they control the clicker, right? Yes. My dog has figured out that if she does something right, that clicker goes off and yes, I'm getting paid. Yeah. So um, it's cool to watch their brains turning and figuring out these really complex puzzles by giving you options instead of just laying down or barking when they don't understand something. Don't, yeah. So um, let's do the next video. So the very first thing is we need to load your marker word or your clicker. So let's say you just, you know what, I don't want to use a clicker because that's just one more thing I've got to carry. Totally agree with you. Then have a verbal marker. Figure out what that word is like yes or good or, you know, something that you're not going to commonly use with your dog. So you don't want to go good boy for just verbal praise and then say good boy when you're telling them, hey, you right. just did it. Let me reward you. So it should be a different word that you would use in your normal vocabulary. To start, you're going to want to figure out what that word is, or if it's a clicker, you're going to stay very still, and then you're going to make the noise, and then you're going to reward your dog, and you're going to go back to a reset position. You don't want to make a lot of movement. You want them to concentrate on the sound of your voice with the word you're going to use, or the sound of the clicker. So it's click treat to the dog's mouth back to starting default position, which is usually on your chest up high behind your back, whatever that is. Sound, treat, return back to default. Do this about 10 times. So your dog just hears the sound. They get food. What you'll notice next, if you do this, um, you'll notice that your dog all of a sudden, if you put the treat down on the, on the bed or on the floor, they kind of look up at you like, well, when's the sound going to happen? That's when we start to teach the dog their name. So, so if you just... set, you can actually see it here a little bit. She's going to set the treat down. Well, not right there, but she's going to set the treat down. His face looks a little bit down and then he looks back at her. There you go. And then she clicks and then she feeds them. So when those eyes come up to meet her face in general, we have a click and then we have a treat. So we'll move on from there. Um, so the this is 
the four steps for marker training, there's four basic steps. So wait for the behavior. Instead of assuming that your dog understands your vocabulary and you're saying, sit down, come, let's go, go sniff, all of these things, wait for a behavior, mark that behavior, right? Capture it like a camera and then reinforce the learner. So once you have the skill down, you can start to add the word. And we as humans love to have words for everything, but your word doesn't always make sense to your dog. So we're naming it after we have the skill. The skill is the most important part. The name comes after. Um, so Yo is going to set up a little demonstration for us. She's going to show us capturing sit um, as well as eye contact. And remember, or at least we in our company enjoy using eye contact to mean look at me. So if you say my name, Julie, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna look right at you. We'd like the same for our dogs, so remembering not to overuse your dog's name as well. So get the behavior, mark the behavior, reinforce the learner. So remember we talked last week about treat tournament, picking the appropriate reinforcement for your dog, um, and then adding the cue as the behavior is predictable. So as we quick break and you're going to uh, change to screen mirroring. Here, let me do it. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do a live demonstration. Let's go here. Where's the cursor? It just stop share. All right. So we're going to change to a new share. We're going to go to AirPlay. Oh, cool. Share. All right. Ready, Benny? Here we go. Is it showing? Yeah. Oh. Go ahead and start. What do you see? I see a blurry Bentley. There we go. Yeah, now I see it's turned the wrong way. Yep. Okay. Here is Here, Yo. Um, and Bentley. We're going to get Bentley's attention. We always want to start off by letting our dog know who's working with them by giving them a treat, just showing up, right? You get paid for showing up. All right, so I'm going to just do loading the clicker first. So it's a click. Yeah. So click, then food, click, then food. Now she's going to start to work on eye contact. By putting the treat on the ground, waiting for his head to come back up and look at her. She's not saying anything, she's holding still. So we're working on just the behavior of his head coming up to meet hers. And he's so well trained that he's doing a nice, beautiful sit as well. But we're just working on eye contact right this second. Now that he's automatically looking at her, we can add his name. Bentley. So Bentley means look at me. Bentley. And by setting it on the ground, we give the dog the opportunity to actually raise their head, right? If I want them to go down so they can come back up. There we go. So sometimes if your dog is distracted or there's a lot of people around, you also need to be more exciting and really get their attention. Um, Yo uses a high pitch kind of silly voice for her dog. Um, I have a puppy voice that I use. It's really high pitched and they like it <laughs> to be nice. silly. The okay, so we're gonna lure the dog into a sit. So by showing them the treat, we're gonna pull that nose up and naturally the bottom goes down. Then she marked it, then we click. So she released him by tossing one on the floor so that he has another chance to do it again. Treat to the nose, nose goes up, rear goes down. Perfect. So sit means dog's rear is on the ground. Now we can, once you've done it four or five times and your dog is doing it well and consistently, we can begin to add the word to it. All right, so we have shaping using a clicker, mm -hmm. we have luring, and then the last one well, we have capturing the eye contact. So I think we did a, a good job of showing all three. We're gonna go back to our presentation. Mm -hmm. 
All right. New behaviors. So um, loading the clicker, sitting next to your dog, um, being on their level really helps with eye contact. Obviously, Bentley's taller, so he has more ability to look up. But if it's a small, a toy breed, you want to be on their level. Um, toss the treat and reset so they have another chance. This is going to be part of your homework. Luring a sit, we'll go into that in just a second. So review of today's class. Socializing your puppy safely will include another link as to um, the other ways that you can socialize in the wagon. Um, we have a crate a that you take outside. So we'll include that um, for you guys to check out on YouTube. Talking about new sounds and environments, I'd really love to get in at least two new sounds and one new environment a day. Okay. Every yeah. day, if you can. And it's like two or three minutes. We're not talking like right. an hour, just two or three minutes. Pull out your phone, YouTube, go there for a couple minutes, do it while they're chewing on a bone or you're, you're giving them their meal. Take your puppy to the pharmacy with you to go grab you know, your medicine and then come right back home. Harness and leash, making sure you're working at your puppy's speed. So don't try to attach them up and yank them out the door. We want to go um, puppy empowerment training, letting them explore tethering, playing tug. Let's see your puppies playing tug. I'd love to get a cute video um, yes, of all, be cute sharing. especially you Boston Terrier parents. I would really love a cute Boston Terrier picture <laughs> playing tug. I miss my parents' dog every day. Um, enrichment feeders, using different kinds, finding Snap out what works for you guys. Um, jump prevention, you know, we'd love to see some examples of that, especially if you have an older dog in your house and your younger dog is learning from them. I think that's pretty cute. We went over capturing, luring, shaping. So we'd love for you to capture eye contact, lure, a sit, and then using a little bit of both, we want you to do for a down. See how you can get your dog into a down, whether it's when they naturally lay down or if you need to kind of lure them into position. Um, let's see how you teach your puppy. Um, teaching eye contact means their name, new behavior, sit and down. Um, and then we, we went over your homework. So please continue to send us um, videos. Engage with us on Facebook, on Instagram. We have a lot of really cute um, challenges and puppy pics. We're going to um, screenshot this picture and we'll place it on our Facebook group page, the private group page. And when you see this image of today's homework, I'd like you to share there, um, whether it's suggestions, we are a small business, we are still open, and I've, we've got a few employees that we'd like to keep, keep on staff, including uh, Julie. <laughs> so um, please share uh, as much as you can with your experience. If you have any suggestions, whether it's lighting or the information, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. And we do have Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I will try to share the links um, to the videos that we showed here so you're not having to go through the entire webinar. This webinar was recorded, so we also are going to have the link on YouTube so that you can watch it at a later time or if you want to share it with someone else. So thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Thank you for allowing us to do this. This has been really, really a fun transition going <laughs> online. We've um, just, We've enjoyed making yeah. the videos and breaking things down. So it's so. actually been a, a cool adventure for us. Make sure um, you guys come back next week. If you're already registered, you'll get a reminder email. Um, but we really do appreciate you being here and helping us continue um, to get the information out. So we have one question here. Is this for feeding or meal or extra? So the question on the interactive feeders, um, definitely ditch your food bowl if yeah. you're still feeding out of a food bowl and use the interactive feeders only. But also in during like puppies, you can just to keep them busy. Like if you're working from home, this has got to be crazy being home all day with your puppy. Yeah. So use some interactive puzzles to kind of keep them entertained so that you're not constantly going, please go in the crate, please do this. So, um, and to make sure you don't add extra calories, just measure out yeah. your dog's full amount for the day. That way yeah. you don't have to keep adding treats or keep adding other things. Mm -hmm. um, just measure it all out for the day and you keep reloading it as you need it. Yeah. All right. Any other questions before we sign off? Otherwise, we're going to get ready for our next two classes. Yeah. So you're welcome to come join us again. These classes are totally free. So please spread the word. Yes. 
Taylor says, thank you. Thank you so much, Taylor. Alex, we love you. <laughs> love your pups. Yes. Um, everyone else, thank you very much. Thank you for um, coming. We really appreciate Ryan, it. Ryan, all of you, thank you again for being here. We really appreciate having so much fun doing these and sharing these videos for you. So talk to you later. Have a great evening. Bye. Are still on.